Well, good morning. What a uh, bright and beautiful morning today is. A wonderful day to worship the Lord our God. As our call to worship this morning, uh, listen to Psalm 111, verses 1 through 4. Praise the Lord. I will extol the Lord with all my heart in the counsel of the upright and in the assembly. Great are the works of the Lord. They are pondered by all who delight in them. Glorious and majestic are his deeds. And his righteousness endures forever. God has caused his wonders to be remembered. The Lord is gracious and compassionate. Thanks be to God for grace that's always flowing down upon us and compassion that God has to uh, walk with us and to be with us and to continue to reach out to deepen a relationship with us. Let's go now to the Lord in prayer. Almighty and gracious Lord, you have done wonderful things to continue and to deepen a relationship with us. What a great gift that is. How many in our world uh, don't take that opportunity to deepen a relationship with you, but yet you continue to reach out to them, you continue to nudge them, you continue to be right there if they would so be willing to turn. So Lord, we come to you this morning and we confess that we are sinners and that without your grace, we could not be saved. And without the work of Jesus Christ upon the cross to be an atonement for our sins, we wouldn't have a relationship with you because sin separates us from you. So Lord, we want to thank you for all the work that you have done to make it possible that we can repent of our sins, that we can turn away from them, and that we can turn towards you and accept the gift that was given to us through Jesus Christ. The gift that was given to us in his teaching, in his miracles, in his compassion, in his love and grace and mercy that he so willingly shared with so many folks. And Lord, we thank you that those stories are written, that we can continue to learn from them. But most of all, Lord, we know that what Christ did on the cross was he made it possible that we could be at one with you again by receiving your forgiveness, your cleansing, uh, by receiving the very righteousness of Jesus Christ placed upon us so that when we turn from our sins and turn toward you and seek to walk in your ways, that now you look upon us through the very righteousness of Jesus Christ and you see us as your daughters and sons of the kingdom you see us as saints who will inherit the kingdom of God. You have included us, not by any works that we have done, but by, by what you have done for us. And for that, we want to thank you for Jesus Christ. We want to thank you for his willingness to let go, to walk here, to die upon the cross, but also we thank you for an empty tomb. You see, Lord, through that we have learned not only can you be the sacrifice for the sins that we have committed, but that you also have victory over death. And that when we believe in Jesus Christ as our Savior and Lord, that we too one day will be resurrected as he was to live in your presence for all eternity. Lord, thank you for that. Thank you for those who have continued to pass the word of Jesus Christ on to us. Some have already gone on before us, 
to live in their eternal home, which Jesus prepared for them. Some are still here teaching us and sharing with us and continuing to sacrifice. So, Lord, we thank you for all of them. We also thank you that you have sent your Holy Spirit to live in the midst of us, not only in us personally, but in our communities of faith, drawing us ever closer to you and deeper into your ways. Lord, thank you for what you continue to do to guide us ever closer to you. We come to you with uh, concerns upon our hearts. Probably the largest concern for many folks is this pandemic. So Lord, we lift it up to you once again and we ask that you eradicate this uh, pandemic from the earth. We know that you have the ability to do that and we know that you can do it in a moment's notice. And we truly ask for that in this moment. But Lord, we also pray that you would guide us in the midst of living in these times of a pandemic. No one, none of us have done this before and it has become a difficult and a hard thing. So we pray that you would be there with peace and compassion for those who are really struggling at this time. Some are struggling economically, whether they've lost their jobs or not able to work as they were before. Some have um, just lost a sense of where they need to be and where they need to go at this time. So Lord, we pray that you would be there for them. And Lord, we also know some folks who have been affected by this pandemic, by the death of loved ones. And we know of others who are missing loved ones at this time for whatever reason because you have called them home. They have died, but now they've experienced the resurrection to live in your presence. So Lord, we pray that you would be there for these families, that you would comfort them, that you would help them, that you would encourage them during this time. And Lord, we also pray for other families who are touched by sickness and poor health at this time. Some are struggling with how to walk forward in the midst of what's going on, and some need your healing hand in a powerful way. Whether it be through the doctors or just through your healing hand, we pray, Lord, that you would bring healing to these folks that you would also be there for their caretakers who need to know your peace and comfort at this time also. Help them to take care of themselves as they take care of others. Give them an ability to have patience and to slowly work through things. And Lord, we continue to think about our country as the country is in the midst of a transition right now from one president to another, we pray that you would bring about healing in this country because there's lots of hurt and animosity and problems, whether it be political or racial. And we ask, Lord, that you would uh, bring about a great healing for this nation that you would cause people to evaluate themselves and see where they need to turn to you so that this nation once again can grow and be on a firm foundation to move forward. Guide those that are in leadership now that they might understand by your wisdom, your insight, what's the best thing to do. And Lord, we want to pray for our community of faith. It's a time of great difficulty for us because it's been uh, almost a year since we've uh, found new ways <clears throat> to worship you, new ways to participate together and encourage and strengthen one another. But Lord, we pray that you would guide us to share the very word of Jesus Christ with those in our community at large who need to know you. For there are many of them. Some maybe have not heard about salvation. 
and what Jesus Christ has done for them. Some have heard, but they have uh, decided not to make a decision at the moment. May we be able to cross paths with all of these, to open up avenues, doors, and ways for them to come to the cross and to come and see the empty tomb and realize the free gift of salvation and eternal life that you offer to them. So guide us to be your people in a dynamic way to do that. Help us now as we pray Jesus' words that he shared with his disciples as an example prayer. Guide us in these words. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Today I want to share with you um, from the first letter to the church at Corinth, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 29 through 31. What I mean, brothers and sisters, is that the time is short. From now on, those who have wives should live as if they do not. Those who mourn as if they did not. Those who are happy as if they were not. Those who buy something as if it were not theirs to keep. Those who use the things of the world as if not engrossed in them. For this world in its present form is passing away. As I've spent some time with this passage this week, reading it over and over again, just these three verses, at first my thoughts were, how can these verses be useful for us today? They seem awful strange. Because it says those who are married uh, should act like they're not married. And those who are mourn as though they're not mourning, and those who are happy as though they're not happy, and those who buy something as though they really didn't have it or own it. And I've spent some time just thinking about this. And one of the things I realized from looking at this passage is that there are times in the midst of our lives that things capture our attention so strongly that we can't pay attention to the very calling that God brings to us. For the past year now, where there have been lots of concerns about COVID-19, and that really has consumed just about everything that we do. It's a topic of conversation. It's a topic that we want to end and want it to end soon. It's uh, a wonder and a fear. It's an anxiety and a worry. It has really informed and transformed how we live our lives right now. The focus on COVID-19 has been very strong. We continue to try to decide how do we gather together in a safe way so as not to spread this disease? We continue to talk about what it would be like when it's gone. We continue to think back of what it was like before it ever happened. You see, COVID-19 has become the center of our attention in almost all that we do. And I really think that maybe this is where this scripture is useful for us. Because 
Paul in his time. As they were living after the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, they expected his second coming at any moment. They expected it to happen any day. And as they were expecting that to happen, it transformed how they saw their lives. They realized that maybe some of the things that they made important in their lives were not that important. <clears throat> if Jesus Christ was going to return any day, they needed to make sure as many as possible knew about Christ. This is why Paul says in verse 29, what I mean, brothers and sisters, is that the time is short. They thought just around the corner Jesus Christ would come back and that would be the end of the world and the end of the opportunity for folks to accept Jesus Christ as their Savior. That's also why Paul at the end of verse 31 says, for this world in its present form is passing away. They truly believed that Christ would be back at any moment and they truly believed that the world as they knew it would change in an instant. And because of this, Paul says, our focus should be upon that, not so much the state of life that we're in. Our focus should be upon making sure that others know about Jesus Christ. You see, Paul's asking them to examine the focus of their life. Is it toward the things of this world, or is it toward the kingdom of God? You see, when we focus and when they focused on the things of this world, that was their concerns. That was their overarching um, reason for living. If they were married, they wanted to make sure that they took care of their spouse and that they continued to deepen that relationship with their spouse. If they had lost a loved one, it was about mourning. It was about grieving and going through that process. If they were happy, it was about what they were happy about. And if they had just purchased something new, that's what it was about. If it was about living in the midst of this world and society and culture and in general, that's what people were looking for. But Paul wanted to make sure that even in the midst of all that, that they were living for the kingdom of God. So as I spent some time looking at the scripture first, wondering how could it be useful for us? How could it be the thing that would help us to grow? How could it be a truth that we could bring into our lives? I saw what Paul was really talking about. Are people focused just on the temporal things of this world? Or are they focused on the eternal kingdom of God and the calling that God has for them? So that's why I believe that what Paul brings to us in this scripture is valid for us today. You see, we've allowed not only the pandemic, we've allowed not only our <clears throat> political situation, we've allowed not only the hurts and pains of this world to overwhelm us and overcome us, but we focus so deeply on them that sometimes <clears throat> we're not living the calling that God has given to us. To bring love and peace and compassion and grace and mercy to this world. God continues to pour all of those things into us, asking us <clears throat> to share them with this world. And when we come, become so consumed with the things around us, it hinders and slows us down from sharing the very kingdom of God. 
how do we how do we change the hatred and the division in the midst of this country we show them God's love by loving them by reaching out to them by forgiving them by helping them by lifting them up by encouraging them and inspiring them <clears throat> you see Paul's question is still good for us today are we allowing the midst of everything that's going on around us to keep us from truly being the kingdom of God on earth and as I thought about that I realized as all of us I think should realize even better and better each day that there are people in our community who are dying without a knowledge of God's offer of salvation and eternal life. There are people dying who have not accepted Jesus Christ as their Savior. And as you read the scriptures, we know what that means. We know that they will not have salvation and eternal life and yet we allow the focus on so many other things in life to grab our attention instead of grabbing the attention of what's happening that will last for all eternity someday this pandemic will be over someday there are people that are filled with hatred that will be filled with love. Someday, many of the anxieties and worries and concerns that we have will be passed. Will we still be focused on helping people come to the kingdom of God? And really, the deeper question is, are we focused on helping them now? You see, if we believed like they did in Paul's day, we would be able to grab a hold of what Paul is saying here, that the time is short. That this world in its present form is passing away. Are we about helping people come to Jesus Christ? You see, it's time for us to examine what is our primary focus. And I think that's what Paul is trying to address in the scripture. That the primary focus must be about the kingdom of God. And that the primary focus needs to be about bringing people to Jesus Christ so that they too can have salvation and eternal life. Folks, the time is short. There are people around us that will die without knowing Jesus Christ. This world is transforming. It is changing. Are we being people who can help it to transform and change into God's ways? Or are we so consumed with our concerns and anxieties and worries and agenda and our lives and what's going on for us that we're not making sure that other people know about Christ? It is time for us to examine what is our primary focus? Is it the kingdom of God or is it something of this world? So I leave you with this question. Are you willing to examine the primary focus of your life? Is it about helping others to know God and salvation? What is the primary focus of your life? Is it grabbing all that you can get? Is it experiencing to the full what you have in your hand already? Or is your primary focus helping people come to God and have salvation.
I agree with Paul. The time is short for many folks. The world is transforming and changing and passing away. And yet so many Christians are not helping people come to know God and salvation. What about you? Let us pray. Gracious Lord, you have given us the greatest and the hardest task there is. But the exciting thing is, is that you have given us the Holy Spirit to guide us and lead us in this task. You not only have done that, but you've said that I will do it through you. So Lord, we just need to make ourselves available to you. We need to make our focus strong upon what this world needs. How do we transform this world? How do we transform our nation? We do that by bringing people to you. We do that by watching them accept Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior and help them to grow in their faith by discipling them. We do that by walking with compassion we do that by letting your love pour into the midst of our lives and flow through us so that people will see us and know us as citizens of the kingdom of God with a focus on what God wants for this world. So Lord, help us as we examine what our primary focus is. May we allow your Holy Spirit to touch us, to change us, so that we might be more about helping people when the time is short and many are passing away. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. God is a powerful God. And Jesus Christ has a deep love for this world. And the Holy Spirit is within you, wanting to reach out into the midst of all that's going on. May you know that love of God and of Jesus Christ and of the Holy Spirit for this world and allow it to transform you to live the primary focus that God asked us to have, to reach this world that they might be saved. May God go with you this week in a powerful way.